Now, from the moment y'all have been waiting for, after taking the time and carefully evaluating each of my top four schools, I feel the best place for me to commit to play during my college career would be. Who you with? All right. Who you with? The University of Tennessee. Since 2003, this is the Sports Source, East Tennessee's number one sports talk show. Presented by Pipe Wrench, and by Junk Be Gone, and by the Garza Law Firm. With your host, John Pennington. The Sports Source starts now. Good Sunday morning. Welcome into the Junk Beyond Studios for today's edition of the Sports Source. I thought it was going to be a happy fun ride today on the show. Uh, you saw right there the number one prospect in the country for the class of 2026 announcing yesterday that he's coming to Tennessee. We'll talk tons about that. Everything seems to be going swimmingly with the Vols right now until this morning uh, when Jordan Thomas uh, was announced as being out for the year. So we'll, uh, we'll discuss that. Ryan Callahan was over there at practice. We'll get his takes on what came out of there today. Matter of fact, he'll be here to cover the recruiting as well. The rest of us are just going to be backup singers to Ryan today. Uh, but we do have a ton of information for you, uh, and we think it's going to be a good show. So let's just dive right into it. First segment of our program brought to you by our friends at Junk Be Gone. Nobody beats East Tennessee's number one junk removal service. That's because Junk Be Gone has more dumpsters and trucks than anyone. they got great crews. And they offer same-day junk removal when you need it. And if you're wondering about the cost, they'll give you a free estimate. Call the best. Call Junk Be Gone. I do it at least once a year. Junkbegone.biz to learn more. All right, let's welcome in the panel today. There we go, the lead singer, Ryan Callahan from GoVols247.com. I usually don't have time to give everybody. We just do it with graphics. But since three of you are with 99.1 The Sports Animal, <laughs> very, very simple here. As Ryan's backups, Will West. Tyler Ivins, Josh Ward. What were you going to say? Thank you for having me. Very good. See you and you tomorrow on radio at 3.30. Absolutely. All right. Um, last week, it always works this week, last week we showed you Tennessee over the last three years in terms of bringing in four- and five-star talent. Well, they were 10th out of the current SEC schools. Mm -hmm. Throw Texas and Oklahoma. Not going well. What's up with that? Immediately... They go on a heater, and they are bringing in players left and right. They've climbed, and we'll talk about this, they've climbed way up into the top ten in 24-7's uh, rankings. But yesterday, they get the uh, commitment from Faison Brandon, number one player in the 2026 class from Greensboro, North Carolina, and a five-star quarterback. Ryan Callahan, tell us about the quarterback. Tell us how they got him. Well, obviously, huge pickup here for Tennessee. It goes without saying, anytime you're getting the number one player in any class, it's actually the first time the 24-7 sports number one player in any class has committed to Tennessee in our 15-year history. So, wow. been a few guys ranked number one on other sites, but never on ours. So, um, obviously, big-time arm. He can make all the throws. Really smooth delivery. I saw him at a camp in early June. The accuracy was effortless. He looks like he's taken a big jump since even last season. First time starter last year, 36 touchdowns, three interceptions. 69% um, completion percentage. Really efficient, really accurate, and a great head on his shoulders. He reminds you a lot, demeanor-wise and a little bit style-wise, of Hendon Hooker. Um, as, as Andrew Ivins, our director of scouting, said at 24-7 Sports, maybe Hendon Hooker with a higher ceiling is kind of what you're looking at. Wow. You don't want to say he's you know, just a carving copy of him, but, but maybe better. But he's, that's, why, that's why he's ranked number one. He's got that kind of potential down the road. And the most exciting part, he's, he just turned 16 two months ago. He's young hmm. for his grade. So he's 6'3 and a half, 197, still getting bigger getting better, uh, there, there are a lot of reasons to be excited about this pickup for Tennessee. How they got him, they were on him from the start. First SEC offer, I think they kind of thought when they first started recruiting him, he'd almost be an under-the-radar guy to target in this class. He ends up being the number one player in the class, and next thing right. you know, they're fighting off <laughs> Alabama and LSU for him. Um, so they, they were in position to land him kind of all along, and they were just maybe fortunate he decided to go ahead and make an early decision, but give them a lot of credit for the early evaluation they offered him before he ever started a high school game, and a few other teams did too. The other hats on the table were Alabama, LSU, and NC State. So that's who Tennessee beat out to get the guy. Any concerns? Maybe the day has changed. Maybe I'm still thinking pre-NIL days where these guys are signing agreements. But class of 2026, 16 years old, normally I would say 
how strong is this commitment? But we're kind of, that has changed a lot with the NIL thing. When you see commitments now, they stick a little bit better. I, so is there any concern here that something flips with this kid? I, I don't think a huge concern. You never say never, obviously, these days, but, uh, or in any era, really. But like you said, I think a lot of these early commitments tend to stick more. You know, last year there was one that went sideways on Tennessee, Jonathan Eccles. That was sort of a unique situation where Alex Golish had initially recruited him. Yeah. He goes and plays for him at USF. So I think in this case, Tennessee's got a good chance of holding on to him, and there's no reason right now to really worry. Gentlemen, your thoughts on the fact that – well, let me go ahead and put up a graphic here. Let's show you I was about to say. The quarterbacks that Josh Heupel is now running through is unreal. Nico Iamaleava, number one in the 2022 class, going to be your starter this year. Jake Merklinger, number 13 in the 2024 class. George McIntyre, number eight in the this year's class, the 2025 group. And now Faison Brandon, number one in the 2026 class. I look at this, and I don't want to – I don't want to – put visions of national championships in people's heads. But I look at that Clemson program that kind of came out of nowhere. Why? Because you had some elite quarterbacks. I mean, Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence, I think you take those guys away. You've kind of seen this. But you take those guys away, Clemson becomes Clemson again. If you start running with this many guys, I mean, your odds of hitting are pretty good when you're getting this type of talent at the most important position. To me... The fact that it's the quarterbacks. But if you were had a number one defensive lineman this year and a top running back next year, that's tremendous. Nobody's going to hand that back. But, boy, you give Josh Heupel this kind of weaponry, that really, really looks good for the future, in my opinion. Am I, am I gushing too much, or are you guys looking at this the same way I am? I'll go ahead and bat lead off this after Ryan. That's great. And all those names you put up there are fantastic. I'll be the person, I guess, Here we go. stirs it the other way. There's, in my opinion, no chance that quarterback room stays intact. Who winds up with Lane Kiffin getting his transfer dollars? <laughs> uh, immediately, you show me right. those list of names you yeah. just had on the screen. Yeah. I immediately look at Jake Merklinger, well, and I think to myself, and this is, it's the orange and white game, but him and Gaston Moore kind of went step for step, and people were chanting for Merklinger, as well as Gaston Moore after the time for Nico. NIL dollars, George McIntyre, if you believe the social medias of the world, just posted a photo of Joey Halsey on a boat, so... If you want to talk about who's still committed or who still looks great for future classes, you have to read between the lines and connect the dots that he seems committed. Look, I, again, I don't know Jake Merklinger. I don't know anybody in that quarterback room. But when you look at talent and what's coming in, and if you fall into place, Josh, Nico this year, Will, Nico next year, who falls in line if Nico leaves for the draft, who's next, who's next, maybe it's too easy or maybe it's coincidental. But I think to myself, that'd be great if they stay together. I don't know if it's possible in today's age. But here's the thing. I wouldn't count on all those guys staying back. I don't think it's going to be like Shark's Teeth where they all play one year and move on. Hmm. But let's say you keep three of those. Let's still say you, great. So you got one for two years, one for two years, and one for two years. You're still swimming in pretty good waters there, in my opinion. But, Josh, you're, what's your take on all this? Yeah, so let, let's assume. Are you positive one or the, are you negative? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you never want to bring in a bunch of quarterback talent. I think t- Tyler brought that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> clearly. So, last thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think there's the, there's the big picture of the statement it makes about the program, and then there's the quarterback conversation, which we're having right now. So let's say it works out with Nico, and he's as good or close to what Tennessee expects him to be over the next couple of years, and he goes pro after two seasons. You have a competition with at least a couple of those guys that are very highly touted, very talented and should fit in in the system. Now, one's a freshman if we're projecting yeah. to 2026 with Faison coming in. But with Josh Heupel's offense, and if Nico has panned out, then the benefit of the doubt is even stronger for the next group that is competing. So there's the profile that has, being, that has been created with Tennessee's recruiting, and then there's the on-field result that has a much better chance to succeed because it was just a few years ago, still not been that long since we were talking about a quarterback position that needed a lot more talent to come in and had some real growing issues. Yeah, look, Tyler's right that they're not all going to stay, but mm-hmm. I say who cares because we've, when we've seen this in the yeah. past from other schools, it worked out pretty well. USC in the 2000s, that went pretty well. Yes, mm-hmm. did guys transfer? Absolutely. Ohio State somewhat recently. That's gone pretty well. Georgia's done that. And they ended up losing you know, yeah. uh, Justin Fields to Ohio State because they couldn't play everybody they had. Yeah. This is a good problem to have, not a bad problem to have. Agreed. I think the big thing behind it, though, is that that there's a lot of hype around Nico. And mm. so I think Heupel, they've done a good job of identifying them. They've proven they can at least put a guy into the pros. But part of it, these are kids, right? And so they see this hype around Nico. I don't know that there's another quarterback right now in college football that's as hyped as Nico is. He was 11 of 19 in the Citrus Bowl. 
That I mean that, and he had a good game. That's fine. Yeah, he had a good but game he's for a first he's, game. But he it wasn't massive. thirty-five of thirty-eight. Yeah, yeah, he's like number six in the Heisman odds right now for a guy that threw nineteen passes. Well, let me ask you this. Let's just we'll wrap the segment with this. What has played the biggest role in getting this? And Ryan, we'll start with you. What has played the biggest role in getting all these quarterbacks in here? Is it the fact that UT and Spire at the time wisely? They took the gamble. They said, we're going all in on this one five-star quarterback. We're making the biggest splash in NIL. We're going to get people's attention. And he's been in the national attention ever since. I don't know if he's not the $8 million man. Is he getting this kind of attention? Was it that? Or was it the fact you put Hendon Hooker in the NFL, you put Joe Milton in the NFL, who apparently is going to be the starter for the Patriots? (laughs) Uh, Is it the fact that you're getting the NFL guys? Is it just the offense? Or is it all together? Um, That's too easy. Give me which one you think is most important. Well, I, I, when, when I saw this question, I was going to say it's, it's the offense and the success of the quarterback position. I thought you were going to ask kind of NIL versus other stuff, how nah. well they're recruiting. I, I, but I think it's the, we'll it's the idea that. that Tennessee has this – they have something to sell now at the quarterback position and on offense. They didn't really a couple of years ago. Nico kind of took that leap of faith. And, and to your point, Nico plays a, plays a role in this too because they, whoever comes in now has a chance to be – his successor. You've got a line of succession now. Um, but yeah, I think the big thing is these guys wouldn't be coming regardless of the NIL, regardless of anything else. If they didn't, if Tennessee went seven and six last year, they're probably not getting these types of quarterbacks. It's that they now have a, a winning program, a good offense, and they all think they can get to the NFL because, hey, and then Hooker and Joe Milton got there. I think I'm, if I'm a big time quarterback, I think I'm better than those guys. So if they can get them drafted, they can certainly get me drafted. I, yeah. think, I think it's the lore. I think that part of college football, one of the things there is that there is a lore around certain players. You say the word her in the South, we all know who you're talking about. Peyton. Even if, yeah, even if you're not even alive. Tim Tebow, Tebow, look at his numbers the last two years. They were pretty similar to Joe Milton's last year, and I know people who covered the sport for 40 years who think he's the greatest college football player of all time. So it, it's just a, when you have lore, there's something about that comes with that, and I think these kids, Nico has that. I think these kids want to be the next guy that has the Johnny Menzel, that all of those things – that, make the, that can make them a superstar regardless of what their output is on the field. Quickly, yes, go ahead. Yes, yes, Cash. If you <laughs> have shown that you can go out there and go all in with a coach like Josh Heupel, a system like Ryan brought up, and you can make me money in my time before I go to the NFL, Cash, that works too. If we go to the two most recent, so you get George McIntyre and then Faison Brandon in back-to-back classes, part of it's a, a little bit of fortune, but they kind of went – all in of, hey, uh, George McIntyre, in-state quarterback, we want you to be our guy. And then talking about the evaluation of Faison Brandon, if you beat out the schools to be first in line for him and you create that relationship. So I think Josh Heupel and Joey Halsley, quarterback, quarterback, coaching, running the offense and coaching the quarterbacks, I think that is very desirable to the quarterback that's coming in. I think the other thing fans should be happy about, and we'll see how it turns out, but I just think this is a much more stable way to run a program than what Lane Kiffin is having to do. I would rather have four guys knowing that some of them are going to, knowing that the guys I choose not to go with are going to transfer out rather than sit there and be the guy who's like, okay, where am I going to find my quarterback Absolutely. next year? I got to go in a, in a bidding war for a transfer who may not fit or who I haven't coached before, who may not fit mm-hmm. in. You don't have to worry about that. You're bringing these guys in. You're creating a culture. They fit the culture. I just think it's very positive. So when we come back, the overall recruiting, and we'll show you what they've done since the start of July, uh, has Tennessee turned a corner? I mean, there were questions. I asked them. Lots of people asked them about this coaching staff. Are they made by NIL or are they really good recruiters? Have they turned a corner or are they just on a heater right now? We'll discuss that. Come on back on the Sports Source. 